This is Dr. Christopher Jones, and uh, this will be a video of an arthroscopic anterior instability repair, also called a Bankart repair. So the scope is in the back of the shoulder. I got a working portal in the front. This is an elevator, so you can actually see some cartilage damage that was done on the anterior aspect of the glenoid or the front of the glenoid. And then the elevator is kind of uh, between the bone and the ligaments where they've been detached or pulled off from the from a dislocation event or shoulder dislocation event. So basically you have to, before you can repair this back to where it's supposed to go, you kind of have to release any scar tissue that has tried to form. Because basically what you need to do is take these uh, this labrum along with the attached ligaments and you have to kind of shift it up onto the face of the glenoid, but also up towards the top of the glenoid or towards the head uh, in order to tighten up the ligaments appropriately. So we get it nice and freed up. Uh, once we free up, this one's pretty straightforward. They're all not this straightforward. Once we're able to get this freed up, then we can uh, proceed uh, with our repair. Um, I'm just kind of coming in and sequentially trying to release any of the adhesions or scar tissue that have formed. So right here, I'm going to show you a quick video. So this is the tear. So this is a torn. Just so you have uh, a perspective of what is normal. This video shows a normal glenoid. So normal cartilage. And then the probe there is at the normal labrum. So you can see there's not a cleft or a tear. Okay, so here we're back to the, uh, to the shoulder that we're repairing. So this is actually a RASP, this kind of a scary looking device is a RASP. So after we release it, we actually use this RASP, R-A-S-P, to kind of scorify or to uh, scrape the front of the glenoid because you want to get any of the soft tissue or scar tissue off the glenoid. You really want it to be a nice fresh surface and that's really the best environment uh, for healing. So once we get this all uh, released and we get the bone surface all um, roughened up for a healing environment, putting the shaver in, and with the shaver we just kind of clean up uh, any of the uh, loose stuff, this uh, loose cartilage here from uh, which is, has been knocked off by the dislocation, kind of remove anything that's loose, remove any loose tissue along the uh, glenoid neck, and then we're uh, ready to... Uh, um, start working on our, our repair. Um, <clears throat> so next what we want to do is after we get it nice and cleaned up and ready, um, we want to bring uh, in a grasper and uh, to, to evaluate for mobility because we want to take this ligament and we want to move it up on the edge of the glenoid but also up towards the head and that kind of pulls them tight and uh, keeps the shoulder more uh, more stable if we can get it repaired in that uh, in, in what we call superior shift. So after we um, are comfortable that we are able to mobilize it, uh, we bring in our drill guide to drill our first drill hole. So this is the hole we drill, this is the guide we drill through. Now we're drilling a hole. Once we're, uh, once we drill that, and this is the one we try to get down as far as possible. Now we bring in a suture passing device. So this is a um, called a labral scorpion. And uh, basically it has a flexible needle. This allows us to get down really low. So I can attest, okay, can I pull up where I want to, can I pull that ligament up to where I want to attach it? So it delivers that needle. And then we can pull a stitch through. And this is actually a high strength suture, but I'm actually just using this as a passing suture. And what I'm going to pass is actually what we call labral tape. You can see that coming through. And the reason I use this for labral tape uh, by Arthrex is that it's wider and it's less likely to pull through and also uh, less likely to cause any abrasion uh, of the uh, cartilage of the humeral head or the glenoid. So now I reach in here with a grasper, and I'm, what I'm going to do is, is I need to have both of these suture limbs coming out the same entry portal. Uh, 
And then once we get both those uh, limbs into the same portal, we can load them onto our swivel lock anchor, which is a bio-resorbable anchor. And you'll see that uh, come into view here really soon. So we load these sutures onto the tip of the anchor, which is called the eyelet. The eyelet is delivered into the drill hole down to the base and then we can adjust tension there's the eyelet we're delivering into the uh, base of the drill hole What I'm doing is actually adjusting the, the tension that my assistant is putting on the humeral head um, to allow me to enter the uh, this, this drill hole at the right angle. So once we get in, we can put our tension on. You can see how we can just pull that right up to the drill, right up to the drill hole, um, create that nice little bumper effect. And then once we get once we get the tension we want. just deliver the anchor in, just rotate it in just like a screw. We, we basically you know, put it into that black line which countersinks the anchor so it can't rub the cartilage as well. So we remove the delivery device, we'll come in and snip the sutures, and that's the first anchor for this uh, repair. So ideally, uh, with bank art repairs or anterior instability repairs, we try to get at least three anchors. There's actually uh, some evidence that uh, three anchors are quite a bit less uh, likely to fail than two anchors. Um, you know, my typical repairs have three or four anchors. Basically, you just want to get. Uh, um, as many anchors as you need to obtain a stable, solid repair. You can see when I put the uh, this suture hook in, you can kind of see the ligaments being tensioned up at the top of the screen, and that's what we want to see. So I'm kind of pulling up to where I propose uh, to put the next anchor, and we're pulling the ligaments up with a nice superior shift, and then anchor them down to the glenoid. So putting through the suture hook, this is a passing wire, so we retrieve this wire out through our secondary uh, anterior or front portal. We can actually use this wire to pull the label tape directly through the tissue. So now we have the second uh, second labral tape in. I'm retrieving the uh, second suture out that front lower portal. Again, we load it on the anchor. Deliver the ankle into our drill hole. And this time I, I was a little overly aggressive. I need to get a little more uh, slack. There you go. That's a little better. And now we uh, get it to the, the appropriate depth. We tension our sutures. And then deliver the anchor. So what's really nice about these, uh, these swivel lock anchors is you really have infinite variability with your adjustment of your uh, to the, the tension on your sutures. Um, you can really put the anchor, get it set, and adjust your tension to where you want it. 
and then once you're happy, just put the screw the anchor on. In my view, this is a huge improvement over some of the previous generation of anchors. Same thing, we'll come in, snip that suture. And then move on to our third anchor. So now we got two nice anchors down there. You can see the ligaments are pulled up very nicely to the edge of the, uh, the glenoid. Got a nice bumper effect. Uh, now we're drilling for our third anchor. We use the same suture hook to pass uh, this next uh, labral tape. Now we're putting in that third anchor, same, same technique. You know, get the right tension. Put it down, okay, adjust the tension, get it perfect. Once we're happy, we uh, put that anchor in. So the typical repair is three three anchors. Uh, on this particular repair, it was a pretty big tear, so I'm actually uh, going to put four in. So we have one more anchor in the front. You can see once you cut this tape with these knots, there's no knots that are going to rub on the cartilage, which is actually very nice. There's been some, uh, some abrasion of cartilage by, uh, by knots, so avoiding those knots is actually a very good thing when you're dealing with uh, uh, a joint repair. So I think I need one more anchor right here. You can see up top, and just above the probe, that's actually a normal, what we call sublabral hole. So we don't want to close that down, but I do think we need one more anchor right here, and that kind of completes um, the attachment of that inferior glenohumeral ligament. So again, same process, drill our hole. So you put that right at the edge, you can see there's a, that a guide is kind of like a fish mouth. And you kind of sit that right on the edge of the glenoid. And that's really what uh, allows you to really put that uh, drill hole in the perfect spot. So again, use our suture hook, pass the wire through, retrieve the wire. Pass our suture or our labral tape. Again, seat the eyelet, adjust our tension, and put the anchor in. So you can see there's not a whole lot of damage in the, in the joint cartilage on this one. There's a little bit, not too much, but uh, now this particular person only had a couple dislocation events. So it's not difficult to imagine how much damage can be done to the cartilage with uh, uh, 10 or 12 dislocations. So this uh, patient also had a tear that extended around to the back. So now I have the camera in the front looking at the back. And we're going to place just one more anchor back here to stabilize that posterior labrum. And you can see that final product here. So there's our final construct. Uh, single anchor with label tape in the back. Four anchors and label tape in the front. Uh, very nice stable construct, very nice stable repair. Uh, hope you uh, enjoyed that uh, video. Um, certainly go to my website to see other surgical videos and to look at my rehabilitation protocols. Thank you.